The Surly Trucker Touring Bikes are probably the most recognisable touring bikes in the world. Go to any popular cycling destination and you'll find a handful of people riding them. Jump on Instagram and lots of folks are using them for their cross-continental trips. With so many happy users, there's no doubt they're great bikes. And now there's a fresh update to the disc trucker for us to analyse. I've actually used a Surly Trucker to cycle across dozens of countries, covering in excess of 50,000 kilometres, so I'm very familiar with the bike. In fact, my trucker was the first touring bike I purchased as a 19 year old. In this video, we'll go through all of the changes, but if you're time poor, check out this summary. Okay, so the frame has had a few geometry tweaks. The most notable is the increase in stack height. Stack height is the height difference from the bottom bracket shell to the top of the head tube. This height has gone up 20 to 30 millimetres on all sizes, which will reduce the number of headset spaces required to get your handlebars to a suitably upright position. In addition, the disc trucker comes with a handlebar which has 30 millimetres of rise. When combined with a taller stack, the end result is five or six fewer headset spaces. As a bike with a taller stack tends to increase the frame standover, Surly has added more top tube slope on the 700C bikes to ensure that the standover remains the same. But unfortunately, the standover is actually 8mm taller for the riders who usually need it most, so smaller cyclists take note. Surly has also taken 10 millimeters from the chainstay length to make the bike a little bit more agile. I don't think this is a win for a dedicated touring bike, but it makes the bike feel a touch more nimble without a load. The frame geometry is otherwise pretty much the same as previously. Surly has followed Kona's lead with an update from quick release wheels to 12 millimeter through axles and flat mount disc brake calipers. This format is standard on road disc and gravel bikes and is presumably going to be more widespread on touring bikes in the future. Flat mount is a pretty neat standard. It certainly looks better, but there is one key downside. You cannot use rotors larger than 160 millimeters. A 180 mm front rotor is a nice upgrade on a through axle bike, especially for those with a bike and body and gear weight on the higher side. Although 12mm hubs are not commonplace in developing countries, hub failures are uncommon, so I don't actually see this as a negative. In the case of a rim or spoke failure, you can always find someone to rebuild your existing hubs into a new rim. A cool thing about this new axle standard is that you can pair it with the super powerful Shimano 705 Dynamo hub. This hub has been tested to offer the most output power at low speeds of any Dynamo hub. The fork now has three pack mounts for cargo cage bags and internal routing for a dynamo cable. You can also fit the Surly Portier racks to the fork crown, giving you many luggage options up front. Baskets, Portier bags, panniers, and cargo cage bags. Unfortunately, the disc trucker still does not have a kickstand mount, but there is an adapter plate which is included with the bike. While kickstand mounts are on literally every European touring bike, I have no idea why North American manufacturers don't make it easy to fit one. I use my kickstand 50 times per day to quickly take photos, pack my bags, organize my bags, or park my bike. I don't mind having no kickstand on a bike packing rig because you can lean your bike on the ground to your handlebar. But when it comes to using panniers, a kickstand is a must, in my opinion. The disc trucker previously came with a 3x10 drivetrain using a Shimano XT rear derailleur and bar end shifters. For 2021, the bike has unfortunately been downgraded to Shimano Olivio. Let me remind you of the hierarchy from top to bottom. XTR, XT, SLX, Dior, Olivio, Acera, and Altus. This solution is currently the best option if a manufacturer is looking to fit user-friendly integrated shifters. The Sora shifters are reliable these days, but I'd prefer to see a higher spec 30 speed drivetrain with bar end shifters on this bike as it will offer smoother shifts and in my experience will work much better in nasty weather conditions. There are other drivetrain options as shown on this Comotion or this Thorn touring bike. In terms of climbing gears, the lowest gear is 20 inches with a 26 inch wheel and 21 inches with a 700c wheel. For reference, 20 inches or less is what we're looking for on a touring bike. If you find the stock gears a bit high, the good news is that you can swap out the front chain rings or the cassette to one with a 36 tooth cog, which probably should have been fitted from the factory. 
The rims have an internal diameter which is 3mm wider than previously, making them perfectly adequate for a 40 to 50mm touring tyre. They're also now tubeless ready. Unfortunately, the wheels look to have been reduced to 32 spokes, so they aren't quite as burly as they could be. Although, I don't think this is a deal breaker because the Alex Adventurer rims are pretty solid. Surly offers 26 inch wheels for its smaller bikes. That's 42 centimeters right up to 56 centimeters. 26 inch is often touted as being the best for developing countries. But from my experience in Latin America over the last few years, 27.5 and 29 inch are definitely the most common sizes as they're readily found on entry level mountain bikes. Finding low quality 26 inch tires and rims is no problem. But when I last went shopping with a friend to find a good quality 26 inch tire, we came back empty handed. With the 56 centimeter bike, you get two wheel size options. Then from 58 to 64 centimeters, you'll be on 700 C wheels. The maximum tire width with fenders is 26 by 2.1 inch or 700 C by 47 millimeters. It would have been nice to see a similar clearance to the Salsa Marrakesh or Kona Sutra. It's worth noting that Surly has a fantastic size range with 10 frame sizes rather than the four to six sizes that are typical. The 42 centimeter bike is one of the smallest touring bikes available. And the 64 centimeter bike is one of the biggest touring bikes you can buy, suiting riders over two meters tall. The bike has been upgraded to the best cable disc brakes in town. That's the TRP Spire. These cable disc brakes are one of the only models to pull both brake pads in at the same time. Otherwise, you'll find Surly extraterrestrial tires and a high quality sealed bearing Cane Creek headset. The price jumps up to $16.75, which is in line with similarly spec bikes, the Salsa Marrakesh and the Trek 520, but it's a couple of hundred more than the Kona Sutra. If you want to do your own build, you can also get the frame set for $725. The frame geometry is as good as ever. It's still available in a very wide size range and I love that the stack height is now much more appropriate for touring. The 12 mm through axle standard future proofs the bike, but on the topic of future proofing, I think 27.5 inch wheels would have been the smarter option in the smaller sizes. While the Shimano Sora shifters have proven themselves to be very reliable, I think the previous 3x10 drivetrain offers a much better performance for the price. I can see why Surly picked that lower spec drivetrain with integrated shifters. They're just that bit more user friendly. As the trucker frames have never felt as laterally stiff as other touring bikes, I would have loved to have seen some larger diameter steel top tubes and down tubes. A rear kickstand mount would have been a very welcome addition and a bit more tire clearance with fenders would have been appreciated. Just enough to get my favorite slick tire in, the 700 by 50 mm Schwalbe All Motion. The Disc Trucker is still a great bike, and with its reputation, it will be as popular as ever. But with more tire clearance, a better spec, and a lower price, the Kona Sutra is still my number one pick for the touring bikes in this category. If you're interested in learning everything there is to know about touring bikes, you'll want the Touring Bicycle Buyer's Guide. The front half of the book teaches you everything you need to know about the bikes. The middle section teaches you how to compare them, and the final section is a listing of 160 touring bikes from around the world.